Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, if you're new, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? So a lot of people, both young people and old people, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today we're going to continue uh, 30 Favorite Albums series. Hope you're, uh, you know, these don't get quite as many views, but these are really cool videos to me. I enjoy doing them. And this is the final one, part three for year 2006. Albums 10 through 1, we're going to count them down. And so here we go. Let's get right into it. And uh, so the first one on this, number 10, is The Roots, Game Theory. And this is some lean and mean urban rap with some uh, tributes uh, folded into the lyrics to Jay Dilla, who had passed away, I believe, the year before. And uh, yeah, this is a little harder edged for the roots, a um, little bit more politically conscious. Uh, very good stuff. Um, a lot of guest artists on here, a lot of samples, uh, busy album, a lot going on, multiple producers. Uh, but it all holds together really well. And uh, yeah, it, it's, um, it, you know, and it got pretty good reviews. Rate Your Music loved it. They really liked it. I had it uh, showed it as number 16 on their list. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, TV band, I know, but The Roots are cool. They're one of my favorite uh, rap groups of the 21st century. All right, coming in at number nine, uh, this one, oh man, I love listening to this album. It is an anthology of Daniel Johnston. So who's Daniel Johnston, you might ask? Uh, he just passed away um, a couple, three years back, and he is a uh, mentally challenged uh, artist. Um, uh, Richie Untenberg. Richie Untenberger, uh, Unter, Untenberger, he wrote a book called The Secret History of Rock, and I first discovered Daniel Johnston in there, and it was in the chapter on naive rock. Yeah, naive rock. And this is called Welcome to My World, The Music of Daniel Johnston. And I don't own this CD, but I have about a half a dozen Daniel Johnston CDs. He was bipolar. And his story is super interesting. So, for example, when he when his father was flying a private plane, uh, he had a hallucinatory episode, a manic episode, and he took the keys and he threw them out the window of the plane and his father had to crash land the plane. And the story just goes on from there. Uh, he got his uh, name a little bit when he was working at McDonald's in Austin, Texas, and he was handing out cassettes of his music, and people liked it. And, uh, and I think the biggest boost he got was when uh, Kurt Cobain would walk around with uh, his T-shirts because he was also an artist. But I wanted to read you some of these titles on here because just just the song titles alone uh, tell you a lot about him peekaboo casper the friendly ghost uh walking the cow i'm nervous man obsessed um and one of chord organ blues uh, that's really cool uh never relaxed never relaxed never <laughs> relaxed sorry entertainer one of my favorite titles ain't no woman gonna make a george jones out of me George Jones was a country western artist who was a drunk and and story of an artist is really uh, poignant and there's 22 tracks on here it's a compilation of his best stuff love it uh I find myself returning to this more than a lot of albums I I play this quite frequently uh some of his albums are hit and miss so it really benefits from a uh anthology which picks the best stuff all right coming in number eight from i i they're from oh, i was gonna say they're from new jersey but they're from new york uh the hold steady very verbal uh literate group i love them this is boys and girls in america and they always tell a story everything's always a uh pretty much a concept album and it's always a most of their albums are about the cd 
part of life and just you know drugs and alcohol and sex and um cops chasing you and just the whole seedy side of life and but they rock out and and the hold steady is uh is a viciously rocking band uh i i i love them um i don't know if you're familiar with them or not i don't know you guys the subscribers i don't know if you're that familiar oh by the way going back to that daniel johnston let me just say that rate your music had that rank number 19 so it's not just me that i really recommend that daniel johnston but getting getting on to number eight the hold steady uh, I watched some live video of them over in, um, I think it might have been uh, Glastonbury, but they were, uh, man, they were rocking, rocking. And uh, he sings more words per minute than <laughs> anybody I know. I have no idea how, how he uh, memorizes those lyrics, but Boys and Girls in America, uh, four and a half stars on... Um, all music and pitchfork gave it a 9.4 and you know they're pretty stingy right so boys and girls in america one of the highest rated albums of the year from pitchfork uh it's self-produced and uh no i'm sorry i'm i'm jumping my notes here but it's uh i'm i'm calling it dysfunctional storytelling yeah all right coming at number seven is a cd that i own and let me um monitor myself here to make sure that that you're getting the uh you're not getting glare on this this is a digipack bob dylan modern times really nice um little booklet in here with the cd and everything lots of really cool pictures and uh yeah this was the album that really brought him back brought him back after uh you know a few years in the wilderness and um well love and theft in 97 and then this one but almost everybody liked this this is a double cd with bonus tracks on it um but you've got uh thunder on the mountain rolling and tumbling when the deal goes down one of my favorite songs working man's blues number two you got Beyond the Horizon, Nettie Moore, really good. And his take on The Levee's Gonna Break. So a lot of this is, um, it's semi-original. What he's doing is he's taking uh, old blues and rock standards and then kind of putting his own lyrics and arrangement to it and calling himself the writer, uh, unless it's just an out and out. Um, you know, like I think Roland and Tumbling is credited. But uh the main thing about this album is the playing. The band uh, is just knocking it out of the park. You've got Charlie Sexton on guitar and I think Bucky Baxter on pedal steel. And and uh, he's had the same bass player for like 30 years now. And he's on this album. I forget the guy's name, but he plays um, stand-up acoustic bass. Awesome. So you guys have probably heard this, maybe not. But Modern Times by Bob Dylan, killer album, love it. All right, next on my list at number six, we're getting there, is uh, My Morning Jacket. And I pronounce this Okonokos, but I'm not sure, Okonokos, O-K-O-N-O-K-O-S, not sure what it means, but ferocious performance, and Jim James is just belting it out has a great set list um let me show you what i've got here i don't actually own the cd but i own the dvd so i can watch the uh concert but this is just really um really awesome this is just the uh sleeve because i keep all my dvds in the binder but um a little picture of them in in concert and they had four albums studio albums at this point and so this is kind of a you know a greatest hits because the set list is the creme de la creme of my morning jacket and i just think they're one of the best bands and 
I, I got to tell you, when I say a ferocious live performance, I am not kidding. Jim James is singing his lungs out, and the band is playing so hard. I don't know. I, I just think they're one of the best live bands. I did get a chance to uh, see them. Uh, but the mix was so bad at the concert. The bass was so loud. It was rattling the building that it was hard to enjoy the show. But when they did an acoustic set, you could hear everything perfectly. Uh, but still, I'm glad I saw them. But uh, damn sound engineer for that show, I thought, really ruined it. But these guys are one of the best, best live bands. If uh, And you can, you can watch this on YouTube. It's, uh, you know, you, you don't have to take my word for it. It's just awesome stuff. All right, now the top five. So number five is is some music that, I, that I'm basically familiar with, but I just discovered this album in the past few months. It's an anthology called Tropicalia, A Brazilian Revolution in Sound. Uh, this is a very highly rated album. Metacritic, 93. Pitchfork, 9.5. Uh, Rate Your Music, the number four rated album of the year. And this is a... Uh, Tropa, Tropicalia is from Brazil. And it's a 1960s blend of Brazilian psychedelia, pop. Um, I just lost my notes here, sorry. Um... Sometimes my computer has a poltergeist in it. Uh, but Brazilian, Latin music, psychedelia, pop, avant-garde, African music, they just mash it all together. And this has got bands like uh, Satano, Vel Satano Veloso, Os Mutanes, uh, Gil... Yeah, you have to forgive me. They're all Portuguese names. and uh, But these are uh, the best musicians from that period. And incredible stuff. Absolutely incredible. Uh, if you're thinking, oh, it's Latin music, well, this is pretty rock and roll and pretty psychedelic. It's uh, Brazil's answer to the swing in 60s and the psychedelia of the late, of the late 60s. And it's so incredibly interesting and often humorous. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Tropicalia, a Brazilian revolution in sound. Love it. Coming in number four, there's a story behind this album. And I don't know why this album isn't higher rated and why the musician isn't um, more famous than he is. This is uh, Richard Thompson. Let me make sure I get this so it doesn't glare. And I have the uh, uh, DVD with the audio. A, a friend gave this to me. It's 1,000 years of popular music. So this is a live concert. And um, it was released as a single um, DVD and a double album. So there's bonus tracks on here. But here's the story, guys. Really interesting. So 1999, when everybody was having uh, uh, the fever, everybody was afraid that when the zeros rolled over, all the computers in the world were going to shut down and everybody was doing review lists. I remember Time Magazine picked Bob Marley's Exodus as the album of the century. Can you imagine the, the hubris to do that? But Playboy magazine put out a uh, survey for a lot of musicians, and um, they asked for the best music of the millennium, of the previous millennium. Well, Richard Thompson's a smart guy. He's like, ah, the millennium. Well, they meant the century. They meant the best music of the 19th century. But Richard Thompson, Thompson took them at their word and he gave him a list of his, what he thought were the best songs of the last thousand years. Playboy disregarded it. I guess they didn't think it was funny. Uh, but it planted the seed for a concert. And I think this is terrific. I, I got to see Richard Thompson in concert a couple times. He's uh, one of the best guitar players in the world. 
Uh, no kidding about that. Uh, he can play pretty acoustic or just shred electric, everything. But so he starts with Renaissance music from um, the 13 or 1400s here. Uh, summer is Ikumen Inn and King Henry, these old, old, old songs. And then he just keeps moving through till he starts to get to some early 19th century stuff like Shenandoah and Black Minor. And I live in Trafalgar Square, which I think the Bee Gees did. And um, he just keeps going on from here. And uh, Night and Day, which is a Cole Porter song. Orange Colored Sky, I don't know who did that, but that was really pretty. And then uh, he gets into the 50s, drinking wine, Spody Odie drinking wine. Um, Friday on My Mind, which was a 60s hit for the pretty things. Tempted, you know, tempted by the, uh, you, you know, the Squeeze song um, that was a huge hit in the 80s. And uh, then he does, uh, this is so much fun. Britney Spears, Oops, I Did It Again. And he's got a woman that sings a couple of the songs with him and does harmony. She does Cry Me a River, which is a Julie London song. And he closes with Sam Hall. And this is so much fun. I mean, he runs through centuries of music in a live concert with a very spare band. I highly recommend this. Richard Thompson, A Thousand Years of Popular Music killer one of the best live performers Do you ever have a chance to see richard thompson both times i saw him he was by himself he was without a a band uh but it doesn't matter he's he's good either way coming in number three is a, another live set so i've got three live sets on here and um i had the uh my morning jacket and the richard thompson the uh, number three is Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. And this is actually from the 70s, but it wasn't released until 2006. And it's uh, the Hammersmith Odeon. London. So what I have here, I'll show you what I've got here. Again, a friend was very generous. He gave me the Born to Run box set. Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run box set. And if you open it up inside... Up on top is, is this um, copy of, there's all these uh, different CDs in here, but this one is uh, the Live at the Hammersmith Odeon 75, which was released, I think, before, might have been released before 2006 uh, in the box set, but then the CD itself was released individually. And this is his London debut. And the crowd is just ecstatic. And if you ever have a chance to see any of the footage on YouTube, I recommend uh, Spirit in the Night. That's one of the uh, most entertaining of uh, Bruce's stage antics uh, when he was um, trying to be James Brown and, and, and really doing these theatrical things on stage. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Jungle Land, of course, is terrific with Clarence Clemens' sax solo. Uh, this is just a killer set. And they had three albums at the time, so they're drawing from those three albums. Uh, but most people consider this one of the best live recordings that you can get ever. And I, I would agree with that. So, you know, maybe you're a Springsteen fan, maybe you're not. But it was uh, it was really a hyped concert. Uh, it kind of annoyed him. Um, but here's the ratings on this. Um, not everybody, not everyone rated it because it was um, a live album. But all music gave it four and a half stars. And Pitchfork, are you ready for this? Pitchfork gave a live album a nine point two. That's that's incredible for a live album. Um, it was much hyped, and he delivered the goods along with the band. Uh, Roy Benton, Danny Federici, everybody in the band is just killing it. All right, coming in number two, we're getting there, is um, a CD that I own. And uh, let me uh, make sure that I can get this up for you. This is TV on the radio. 
Return to Cookie Mountain, which is their debut album proper. They had a um, EP that they released before this, but this is the one that has Wolf Like Me on it, which I did a Master Monday to. And, uh, oh my God, these guys are uh, just one of the most creative bands of the 21st century. Totally unique signature sound. I love it. The two singers do most of the writing. Dave Sitek, who's the keyboard player, is their producer and kind of their musical director. And um, you probably are familiar with them, so there's probably nothing else I need to say. But the use of electronics combined with rock and roll and uh, maybe just a slight R&B influence, really cool band. Uh, one of the guest artists on here, and it's actually not my favorite track, but one of the guest artists on here is David Bowie. So considering that was their debut, uh, the advance word on these guys must have been great. So, well, coming in at number one, I'm going to go ahead and bring this album up on Spotify so that I can talk about it. I, I won't play anything or it'll get blocked, but um, I just want to go over these songs with you. Uh, this is an album I really didn't listen to until recently, a couple of years ago. Uh, but my favorite album of 2006, you ready? Drum roll, is Sonic Youth, Rather Ripped. This is a, um, a little bit more melodic version of them. But these songs like Incinerate and Do You Believe in Rapture, some wonderful uh thurston moore songs uh jams run free rats is a song written by lee Ronaldo and sung by him he usually does one or two songs that's one of his best best songs lights out and probably my favorite song from the album that kim kim gordon sings is pink steam this is a wonderful wonderful album and um some of the songs don't have a million plays on here, but Incinerate has 44 million plays. So I don't know if that was released as a single or what. But, uh, you know, the twin alternate tuning guitars that they do and the deadpan singing of Kim Gordon. And uh, I'm just a huge Sonic Youth fan. They just hit. They just hit my sweet spot. And. This is my band. Um, I never got to see them. Never got to see them. I might have been a little late to the party. I remember a guy telling me about Daydream Nation when it came out, and um, I checked that out. Uh, but boy, I'll tell you, in the 21st century, I have fallen in love with Sonic Youth, my favorite album of 2006. And the reason I do these lists is I couldn't have told you this would be my favorite album. I knew I liked it, but I thought, no, there's other things that would top this out. But no, I kept stacking it up against the others, and that's where we're from. So that's it. We've wrapped up 2006. I love doing these videos. Let me know what you think. And if you like what we're doing, uh, seeing you reacting to the new music of the 21st century and discussing it and analyzing it, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia. And um, I'll reference a Spotify playlist uh, if you'd like to uh, listen to highlights from the 30 favorite albums. Okay, take care.